If you're anything like me, then you're probably always worrying about how your pet is doing, and even more, wishing you knew what man's best friend was thinking. Well, wonder no more, as our next guest presents an amazing innovation that helps you get into your pet's head. Pet Pace is a company awarded a project by the Bird Foundation, which promotes innovation and business relationships between American and Israeli companies. And the president and CEO of Pet Pace, Avi Menkes, is here with me now. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having us. So, uh, first of all, what is the Pet Pace Collar? Pet Pace is a digital platform to promote pet health. We created a, a non invasive uh, smart collar. This is the collar that uh, monitor seven dimension uh, biosensing parameters. We are sensing uh, the temperature, the pulse, the respiration, heart rate variability, which is for pain, stress, and disease prediction, calories, position, and activity level. If one of the parameters go out of bound, an alert is gonna be issued to the pet owner or to the veterinarian, either via a smartphone, or via an email, or via a phone call. And how, how exactly does it work? You know, you have so the, we have the collar comes in three sizes, small, okay. medium, and large. It's, uh, it's non-invasive. You don't need to shave the pet. You don't need to do anything. You mount it uh, on, the, on the neck of the pet. You turn it on. You plug the base station to your home router or uh, to the office router. And from that point in time, the collar starts to pick up all the vitals and creates a baseline for the pet. All the data goes to a big data on the cloud, and an analytic engine starts to look at the data and find if there are any anomalies. So, okay, so, you know, I heard you mention earlier position. First of all, how do you measure the position of the pet? And the sensing that, uh, that we have here, consider this like a very sophisticated stethoscope. Okay. So the temperature, the pulse and respiration, actually we are listening to the, to the bloodstream in the, in the neck. Then there are accelerometers, uh, three axis uh, accelerometer, which are measuring the movement of the pets and the position that they are lying. So we taught the software, we taught the software here what actually a right position, left position, standing, lying on the back, urinating, eating. So the software knows all this. So the next question is why do we need all this position? Yeah. Because pets are creatures of habits. Since they are creatures of, of habits, they do the same thing all the time. So, for example, if a pet is lying on the right side most of the day, and this is like 80, 90 percent, and suddenly they stop doing it, maybe start, something is wrong on the right side. There is a pain or some disease is developing. So the system is going to uh, fire an alert to let you know that something is wrong with the behavior of the pet. Wow. And then and you can have this hook up to anybody that you want, like anybody who wants to see it, the veterinarian. The... The, you, you hook it on the pet, then you have a digital platform that the pet owner and the veterinarian can share, can log in and see all the data. The pet owner see, see it in a certain level of higher granularity, but when the veterinarian will log to the, to the cloud application, they are going to see all the details, including all the points and the data points, in order to make a more informed decision. Imagine to yourself that we can start to actually treat the pet even before they reach the office. The veterinarian can right. start to make some recommendation and decision even when the pet is not in the office already. So, okay, so what inspired you to make, to make this? I mean, because it sounds, it sounds so simple that everybody wants to know what their pet is thinking, but it's, you know, how did you come up with a way to actually do that and why? Actually, I, I've been in a remote sensing more, most of my life. I did remote sensing for objects. And uh, one day uh, I decided that uh, we need to do something for the better good, not just object, but maybe there's somebody that needs help, that needs a voice to talk to us, to tell us what's going on. And I started to research the, the, the subject and uh, met uh, Dr. Asaf Dagan, our chief veterinarian, talked with him about this, and, and we decided that that can be a great idea and uh, started to implement it. This happened in, uh, in, uh, in February 2012. February 2012. So how long has this been in development? This, this has been in development for about three years, and uh, we went to the market in February, to, not in February, in, uh, in Q1 2015. All right. And what's, what's the response been like so much? The response so is very interesting. We have two types of clients. We have the clinics and veterinarian that are using it for in-clinic operations. And a clinician started to purchase it for their internal operation. And uh, then we have pet owners that are very concerned for the pets. And they, are, and they are buying it online to their pets to make sure that they follow up what's happening with their pet's life. 
What's, uh, what's like the margin of error on this? Uh, the, the collar is accurate 85 to 90 okay. percent uh, on all its parameters. So if there is a fever, more than likely we'll detect the fever. Yeah. If there is a problem with the heart and uh, there is high elevation, low elevation pains, more than likely we are going to detect it. And if one of the behavioral parameters is not uh, in line, more than likely we are going to detect it and alert somebody. And we have enough uh, documented cases that uh, we have done it before. So I understand that you have one of these on your own pet. Correct. And Jake. Jake. And, you know, what, what is Jake doing right now? Let's see what Jake is doing. Let, let me turn on my mobile phone. In the meantime, can I see the collar? Oh, there it is. This is Jake. We, right. Now it's picking up the information about Jake. Okay. Okay. Jake actually uh, was on a trip outside. I believe it was after my wife fed him. And now he's back home, and if I need to guess, it's still sunlight, so he's in the yard, walking in the yard. So this is his activity. And if we go here, I can see actually his temperature. Everything is okay. We see the graph of the temperature. We can see the graph of the pulse. As we can see, Jake was walking, so we can see that the pulse went up. Wow. And we can see the same for the respiration. These are all the activity levels, uh, the position that Jake was on, you know, most, as you can see, most of the day, Jake is lying. <laughs> he's, not, he's not too active. Yeah. We, can see, we can see the graph here, and we can see what we call activity score. This is when he was asleep, and then okay. when he wakes up, and he starts to, to get points sure. to be active. Actually, active dog is good because then they are not gaining weight. Right. So what's, what's one of the most surprising you know, facts that you've picked up from the data? We picked up a very interesting information. If you look at the books, you see actually that uh, a dog uh, pulse, for example, is usually the golden rule is around 55, 60 at the lower level. Mm -hmm. We started to put the collar on uh, dogs. Let's talk about Jake. And the system starts to alert us that the pulse is very low. When Jake is asleep, his pulse is 38. According to the books, it's impossible. So actually, the, uh, the factual information from their dogs at their habitat is very different from what the books are saying because we are starting to gather a lot of medical information and we see real facts with dogs about, that are in the real habitat as opposed to, a, as opposed to a artificial locations. Incredible. So you're actually, so you're like, you know, not, this is not just informative for an owner or the, you know, the individual veterinarian, but for the whole scope of, of medicine. Exactly. Actually, we have a big data that the data is ac accumulating all the vital sign and the, the data has never been deleted. And there is uh, millions of uh, data points that we are receiving about pets, about uh, breeds uh, in different sex, different elevation, different geography. So if you take a pet in Colorado and the same pet in Florida, they behave differently and they have different diseases because they are influenced by the geography. And we can actually detect all these trends. All right. Well, my final question uh, you know, is how much does it cost and where do I get it? Uh, the pet, the collar cost uh, from a... Uh, uh, one forty nine ninety five with one year subscription dollars okay. up to two nine two nineteen ninety five uh, with one year subscription. You can buy it online on our pet, www.petpace.com. You look, you go to the store, you push the purchase button, and you go through the process. And uh, in four days, it will be in your doorstep. Or in a different location, like in Canada, in Spain, or in Australia, we have local representatives that are selling it, and more countries are going to come up. All right, well, I can't wait to get my own, actually. You know, my dog, I can't go anywhere without him. And, uh, and yeah, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me.